Hello and welcome to Wilcom's video short series for Embroidery Studio E4.0. Um, today I'm going to show you some um, advanced uh, techniques for the advanced user. And uh, this uh, I'm going to show you what to do when uh, you don't have the font. You don't have the Wilcom font um, or you can't find a uh, true type font that will match what, what uh, a customer has sent to you. And again, uh, this is uh, uh, a time-consuming, uh, one, of, one of the most time-consuming things to do in embroidery is to digitize lettering. And um, it takes uh, a lot of patience, And uh, but if you practice with it, uh, you can become a master at it uh, if you practice with it. Uh, here we have uh, some lettering here, and I'm assuming that I don't, I don't have the, uh, the font for this. And now I'm going to have to actually go in and um, create this font uh, that I don't have. Um, and in order for me to do this, I am uh, forced to digitize the lettering manually. Okay. And again, uh, this is an advanced uh, technique uh, that I use that's uh, very, very helpful when uh, you don't uh, or can't find the font to use and you have to go in and manually digitize the lettering. Now, uh, the first thing uh, I always recommend is um, um, if you've taken any of my classes before, there's a minimum height size for text in embroidery. And uh, some people, they don't go be below five millimeters. Some people don't go below uh, four and a half millimeters. Uh, definitely not below um, four millimeters. And that's for the tallest letter, okay? And so with this, um, it, I, I use quite a bit, I use the uh, shaping tools and I, I love them and I also use uh, the um, vector outline tool here a lot also. And the way that I do this, uh, one, I'm going to just put a uh, rectangle on the screen here. I'm going to click on my vector outline tool and I'm just going to click my rectangle. So I'm just going to go in and just draw uh, a rectangle on the screen like this. Okay. And uh, I'm going to navigate over press my uh, select tool. I want to, uh, I'm working in metrics here. I want to see what four millimeters tall, uh, or let's say four, 4 4.5 millimeters tall looks like. So I'm going to navigate over here uh, to my height. I'm going to type in 4.5 and I'm going to press enter. Okay. So this is 4.5 uh, millimeters tall. I'm going to press my shift key down and I'm going to pull this out like this from the center. Okay, so this gives me information on uh, the size of the lettering. So at least uh, um, it's good to know that the size of the lettering here is above minimum height size. Okay, and that's 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 a great for what I'm trying to do here because usually if you have to increase the size of the lettering, uh, then you may have to increase uh, once you digitize it. You may have to increase it uh, for the uh, for the actual design once that's finished. So I'm just going to make this taller here. Now notice that I'm uh, making these the, the height of the uh, letters, the smallest letters here for this because these are lowercase uh, text that we're dealing with here. Now I want to also uh, get uh, the height, remember, um, at the minimum width for a column should be, I'm going to right click on this and drag it down to do a duplicate. And I'm going to make this uh, 1.2 millimeters tall. 1.2. Okay, it's telling me that's too large or that's too small here. So let me go in. Um, Okay, so if you take it past what it could do, actually, this is going to give you a pop up like this. That's fine. Uh, so here, when I look at this, this uh, is 1.2 millimeters. Okay, that's what the. So I'm going to um, click here on my transform tool to rotate this to a vertical. Okay. Let me delete this here and let me uh, you know, open this up here. I'm going to unlock this on the screen, the design itself. Okay, just looking at the uh, size of it here. 
I'm gonna press K to lock that again and so um, as I go in again I want to make sure if I use my selection tool here and I go in and I make this 1.2 this is the minimum width uh, here for a column in order for it to be legible on garments now there there's some exceptions to this um, if you're stitching lettering on a complex fill stitch uh, that's going to be a different situation because you can actually use uh, that um, fill stitch background as as an underlay setting and uh, in that particular case uh, you can use uh, digitize probably three and a half millimeter millimeter letters in that particular way so I just wanted to make sure that my maximum my minimum size here was sufficient here and that means that it's going to be okay here and again this is just uh, to verify that uh, that the, that my measurements are correct uh, before I begin um, in um, construction work it's always as a rule uh, that you you measure twice cut once so here basically I'm setting up uh, a template in order for me to digitize from to do these letters here actually again very very time consuming it can be but very beneficial if you can learn how to do this uh, to perfection I'm going to click here now I'm going to press control D to duplicate this okay and I'm going to press my shift key down I'm going to grab this from the top and with my shift key held I'm just going to move this down like this to where I'm getting the width of the horizontal uh, the T the crossbar okay so this is what I have okay everything looks looks fine okay so um, again you just want to make sure first of all first and foremost that the size is correct and that you're not going below minimum size because what you don't want to happen is you don't want to get to the machine and put your design on the machine and run it and you have problems uh, because you didn't uh, because you skipped a step okay and so this the more that you do this the faster that you get with it uh, trust me and it'll uh, be a lot of help to you as well so with this now I'm gonna take this here and I'm gonna press my shift key down here I'm just gonna move this back just a little bit like this and you can see with the crossbar here is slightly thicker uh, than the um, than the width here of the um, top here of the E here and the bottom but it's okay because when we digitize this we're gonna go underneath this here like this and underneath the line here um, okay and you're gonna make sure also that you make sure that you save your designs and that you save them uh, often to your designated uh, location as well and I'll just name this text test and I'm going to save this all right so I've got my horizontals and now I'm going to do my verticals now I can go in I can grab this one and all I'm going to do is I'm going to make this taller I'm going to grab it to a straight line like you see on the M here and I'm going to move this out like this okay and now I have my uh, column width for my lettering and again the reason for this is to make sure that every column is the same width because uh, if you stitch something out and you have uh, columns on, on text uh, that that are one width and uh, the, the next letter next to it has a column width that's less than that it'll be the first thing the customer sees okay I'm right clicking here okay so that I can have the same oops I'm gonna undo this the same measurements right click and drag over for a quick clone the great thing about doing this is that if you have letters that are, that are the same uh, you won't have to digitize them twice unfortunately here it looks like we don't have any symmetry at all so uh, for this one as I right click and drag this over again making sure that that vertical is exactly the same width on all of the letters or it's not going to work okay and the, the more that you do this again 
the faster that you'll get with this as you're working. Okay, and I'm going to click Save here. Excellent. So now, when uh, I'm digitizing, uh, I want to be able to um, uh, digitize the lettering, and I want to be able to um, digitize these open ends here. Um, um, this is an open end here. That means that um, this stitch is going to shoot up here, and it's going to shoot down here. Because of the pull compensation, it's going to squeeze in here, and it's going to squeeze in here. So in order to offset uh, the um, push compensation here, I'm going to draw a little uh, my little guide stitch here. And I use this because this is going to be, um, I call it where my, my, where my last thread will be digitized. Okay, And what that means um, is that I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to press D to hide the graphics. So when I digitize my uh, column here, I want it to end up on this line Okay, when it stitches out on the fabric. So because this is an open end, okay, um, I'm going to have to digitize the last stitch here. I'm going to pull it back. Uh, we call it taking it back a stitch. Okay, because again, with the push compensation, it's going to squeeze in here, squeeze in here, and this is going to push out. And you don't want the uh, lettering to be higher uh, than it's supposed to be, or that will not give a good presentation. I'm going to press D to bring that back like this. Okay, great. So now I've got that. Um, if I want to go in and go further and uh, do some uh, lines here, I can always do that as well just by going in. Okay, there, and you have one on the E here also. And again, this is just, you know, uh, and I want to add here also that digitizing is a, uh, it's an opinion, okay? And because everybody does it differently, um, no, two, no two people are gonna do it exactly the same. Uh, so they're just like opinions. And so uh, things that you try or that you don't try is entirely up to you, okay? And so with this, uh, we're just going in and I'm gonna, click this and I'm going to click it again to get my hollow node points and I'm going to uh, skew this here in the same angle as that one and I'm going to slide it over like this okay um, I can take this one if this is the same angle I can do a control D to duplicate it and then uh, flip it over like this oops it didn't duplicate hold on for a second and I press my D key here to hide my graphics here also. So I'm going to press this. I'm going to control D. And I'm going to flip this. And I'm going to use my arrow keys. I use my arrow keys going straight. Uh, and I use this. This is just something that I do to make sure that those objects are straight. Uh, and they're going to be straight. And there's no um, uh, difference in uh, the angle or you don't want one letter to stitch above another letter so I use my arrow keys uh, in that particular sense to uh, save me some uh, possible uh, grief later on here I'm gonna select these two node points here on this and I'm just gonna slide them over like this okay just like that and I'm gonna save this again all you're doing right now is you're setting up a, you're setting up a template for this that's the main purpose of what we why we're doing this, what we're doing right here right now we're setting up the template for it and so once we get all of those uh, items here uh, in place the next thing I'm going to do is I want to lock these on the screen so they don't move so I'm going to navigate over here to my color object list as I drag it up like this I'm going to select my vector objects and I'm going to press K or you can right click here and you can choose um, lock here also Okay, so now those are not moving. Okay, and I'm going to save this. So at this point now, I'm ready to actually go in and start digitizing uh, this. I'm also going to go up top here. Also, I'm going to uh, go to design and I'm going to, I'm going to go to auto fabric here. I don't want to use this right now. So I'm going to uncheck it. Okay, gives me a pop up. And that is only going to affect this design that I'm working with right here. And so with this, now I'm going to zoom in here with my by rolling my mouse button forward here and I'm going to start with the S. Now uh, you have issues here. Um, if I press my number one key it's going to take this one to one so it looks like so this is the actual finished size of the embroidery here. Okay so that you can see the small spaces here uh, we have to uh, accommodate for those small spaces so that it doesn't close up 
and uh, end up looking like just a blob on the on the uh, fabric itself basically you have a small area here as well and on the a so these we have to pay close attention to okay as I roll my mouse button forward here so I'm gonna go in um, my choice that I'm going to use to digitize this um, it, again everybody's different uh, digitizing is an opinion uh, I'm going to use my column a stitch here okay some people might use the column B stitch um, that's fine you can use that stitch for that also and uh, but these two stitches here will be used predominantly uh, to go in and digitize uh, the small lettering here okay so right now as I go in uh, I'm looking at this um, figuring out I'm going to press uh, O here for a full view um, how I'm going to do this and I'm going to digitize this the same way that I would write it from left to right like this if it were going on a cap um, I would start from the center and digitize it from the E out this way do a trim jump to the T and stitch it back here uh, to the right side like this okay but this particular situation here uh, is going to be a left chest uh, if there's any indication at all that you need to digitize this uh, for a cap design or anything like that you could always ask um, or if there's a, any inclination that it's going to be done for a cap um, I would uh, instantly I would digitize it from the center out okay and so as a matter of fact you know what let's do that let's say that the customer calls back and say you know what uh, we're going to stitch this on a cap also so I'm going to start with the E now here uh, as I go and you see my lines everything is set correctly now with this um, there are some things that you can use uh, to uh, go in and um, do the outline of the E here uh, in, in Corel Draw as far as going in and uh, uh, changing uh, doing a uh, rectangle tool and going in just to get the perfect outlines here but we're just going to go in and start digitizing okay so right here I'll start here with my input A making sure that I have my satin stitch here selected as I go in and I'm going to start digitizing so I'm going to start here I'll go uh, point here counterpoint here there I'm gonna press my control key down to make this to force us to do a straight line here start here for this and um, I'm gonna click it here as well like this now for this small text here um, I'm gonna click this here and I'm gonna stop here also I'm gonna press enter and that's what it looks like okay um, now if I want to hide the uh, graphics I can press D okay if I want to hide the stitches I can press S like this and so right now if I continue with this I'll start digitizing from here there okay here and here there and here now for the uh, top part of this I'm gonna go slightly above the line here and slightly above the line here press my control key down and do the same thing there as I right click here this as I go in and I'm digitizing uh, the E here like this here slightly below the line here slightly below the line there straight across like this like that and you have a choice here because you have a, a small curve here now it's up to you on how you want to do this um, um, one way is to go in and digitize the curve or you can uh, right click right click here and because that space is so tiny here here and go point and point, counterpoint there and press enter I'm gonna press s this is what it looks like okay again it's gonna be this small as I press my number one key it's gonna be that small okay so when you zoomed in things look astronomical when you zoom into it like this but you have to keep in mind once you stitch that out as I press my number one key here that's gonna be the finish size and embroidery and instead of it uh, turning um, instead of the stitch uh, turning um, as I select this here I'm gonna click on the E press escape here and select it um, if I press H here for my um, reshape tools so this is what it's, this is what it's gonna look like guys here okay so when I look at this and I say um, you can always go back in and you can modify and edit and change your lines that's something that you can do at any time here so but as far as the stitching itself basically as I click this and press the space bar to make this a um, curved line here again I, if you click on a node point here and press the space bar 
it'll change it to a curve point. If you press the space bar again, it'll take it back so it does toggle back and forth. So I want this again to stitch um, going outward like this versus having to turn it here because this area here is so small. One thing to keep in mind guys is this, the size of a needle uh, is about a millimeter wide. So if I create a shape here on like here, like there, and I'm going to click on this. If I make this one millimeter tall, Okay, now watch this. The size of a needle is about a millimeter wide. So you see this? So it definitely cannot be any smaller than the width of the needle or you're gonna have problems on the machine. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the size of a needle, about a millimeter wide. And so any spaces that you have here, they need to uh, acknowledge that fact actually. So from here, I would even go in and click on the outlines here and press H for reshape tool and just maybe move this uh, down here also. Now keep in mind also that uh, the, the stitches are not turning like this to push up here, but they're going straight out like this. And that's gonna protect that and uh, keep that from happening there. And that's a very important rule uh, that we deal with in, uh, in embroidery, okay? I'm gonna, once I click on this again, any, any type of objects that you need to fix or anything, you can just click them. Um, I usually use my down arrow here on my keyboard uh, to move that down. And so um, that's pretty much how um, the E uh, is done here. And again, you wanna make sure the reason for the guidelines is to make sure that everything is, uh, the, same, is the same width, okay? Because you don't wanna have any surprises once you get out to your production floor uh, because of something that was missed. Um, you know, uh, sometimes things happen, you know, because we're, we are human. But uh, as often as possible, you want to make sure that you're going in and doing everything uh, possible to make that uh, correct the first time you take it out there. I'm going to press D. So my E is done, okay? And I'm going to go to my M. Now, I mentioned earlier that um, uh, about the push and pull compensation. And for this, um, you see the artwork here? The artwork is bad, okay? That's why you see these pixels. It makes it uh, difficult um, to see and to digitize artwork like this actually and it takes you longer to digitize the design because now you're straining your eyes trying to make sure that everything is in um, it, it, that it's on the line okay and so uh, it does help also to be an artist it does help with that creative process of it so here when I go in uh, but you don't have to be an artist to be a digitizer but it just uh, it's, it's a good if you are I'm gonna press my control key to go here and digitize that one there. I'm pressing my control key down again to force it to do a straight line like this. And as I go in, I'm gonna right click here, just like this, slightly above the line. Right click here, left click once, and left click twice. Press enter, I'm gonna press S. That's what it looks like, okay. The cool thing about this, guys, is you can actually go in and do this. Um, I can select this and do a Control D to duplicate it and slide it over with my arrow key going to the left. You see, this is how um, how you gain speed in digitizing uh, objects like this. So with this, whenever I have objects that are the same, it makes no sense for me to have to go. I'm going to press D. I want to make sure I get everything correct. Press H here. It's going to start stitching here and it's going to exit here as I press S like this. And I'm going to click save just like that. See how easy that was? Okay. As I go in again here, I have my column here. I don't need the artwork for this basically because I'm just going to go in and click it here. Now, again, you have these um, open ends here that need to be digitized and they need to be. Um, making sure that they're um, pulled back with the last thread actually, because keep in mind, once it stitches on the fabric, it's gonna push out, okay? And it's gonna be the same size as that, uh, as that first one on the outside of it. So press enter here and save like this, okay? All right, that was not bad. Here for the, for the Y, so I'm gonna press D here. And for this, 
and I'm just going to go in and um, again start on this uh, this last stitch. And there, as I zoom in, as you see, I'm constantly zooming in and zooming out while I'm digitizing. And it's just a control thing that you, you have to make sure everything is, um, is syncing correctly. And you just want to make sure uh, that uh, everything is um, the way that you want it to stitch, actually, like this. As I press H here, you can always go in, move things around to make them look better like this. Is that your disposable here now right now now um, you have a feature inside your program that does uh, closest join stitch automatically uh, that's set to your default I have those turned off now where that is is under your setup drop menu and under options uh, here you have a uh, closest join here actually I thought I turned it off here um, but um, this one is actually turned on so what this means is it's uh, going to automatically uh, connect to the closest uh, point uh, to the object before and after it okay and it does it automatically and so uh, sometimes when I'm digitizing sometimes I prefer not to use this because uh, I want to control the machine uh, in a manner that uh, I have full control over, over the machine as far as how it's uh, stitching out and so with this um, I'm going to um, I'm going to take that off and click OK okay so now because of that uh, as I press H here the exit point here will not move to the closest point of the next one uh, that it goes here as a matter of fact you know what let me do this let me show you let me turn it back on again so I can show you how this works I'm gonna press uh, S and D now here's my exit point here here's my starting point okay and the exit point here so what happens is it's going to automatically move this exit point to where the next uh, closest uh, object here is is what's going to happen watch this so once I go in so as I start digitizing here as I go in I'm going to start digitizing start here and go here and go up and that same last stitch here and press enter okay now I'm going to press S here now let's take a look at uh, where the uh, exit point moved to on uh, this first item here I'm going to press H you see where it moved to here so it automatically moves to that second uh, to the closest point where the next stitching is going to start is what it does. That's that closest join. That's the um, there are two different types of closest join here inside the program. This is the one here uh, that involves the, the digitizing uh, aspect of it here. So uh, it uh, does the closest join so that it avoids uh, uh, unnecessary trims in the design. And a trim on a machine takes anywhere from six to ten seconds. So you might want to keep that in mind also. Okay. And so, so that, that's there. So that's done. And now for the S. Now, remember the E here and how we did the E uh, for this. Um, and remember also that the, the way that the E was done here on the ends here is kind of crucial here that it, it's done the same way on the S. So I'm, I'm going to click on the E here. All I need is um, just this area. I'm going to press Control D. Use my arrow key here. Now, if you want to also... While you're using your arrow key if you zoom out it'll it'll move faster it's based on the graphics here on the screen here okay so if i flip this go up to the top here to my so this is what i'm looking for okay i'm looking for this now now the way that i can do this now is i can actually go in and i can split this and move it up because i want this to appear also up top as well and I can do this a couple of different ways I'm gonna press control D okay and I'm gonna flip this um, horizontal okay in vertical like this I'm gonna press D press S to hide the stitches so this is what I'm looking at I want my S to have the same edges here as the E has and this is how I go in and how I construct that I'm gonna press D 
to bring up so I can see this area here. So when I go in, I might change the color here to this one. And I'll go into my column C stitch here and I'll do the same thing just like this. Okay. All I'm doing is I'm trying to get the same uh, the same look, the same feel of the uh, those edges for the E here um, and make those same adjustments here for the S. Go here and you see how that works because I can go in now and continue digitizing this here like this making sharp little turns like this here there and there press my control key down go straight across and go there and there okay right click sharp curve here feel strange going um, from the opposite direction there straight across like this and you see all I'm doing is I'm mirroring the same way um, that I did on the E like this press enter I'm gonna press S to show the stitches this is what it looks like okay um, I can get rid of that one press D and this one press D and this is what it looks like so now with this as I press S now uh, the spaces uh, between uh, the, the lines here again you can always select this if you want to improve uh, the uh, shape here you can always go in and change that and adjust that and move your no points here uh, to make the curve um, to make it a nice curve so that the machine is not uh, jerking uh, trying to make that uh, trying to make that turn so it's always nicer uh, to be able to go in and to uh, have the stitches turn smoother like this it's not good so you have to go in and and just adjust the way that the uh, angles turn here because this is what this looks like here now okay and you want to make sure that those angles are tight on the inside and make sure that they're open on the outside like this to make a smooth turn okay here I'll just press my space bar to make that a uh, nine point here here's my angle okay now now for this because of the uh, angle here I actually don't really need uh, an angle here I can delete this one and um, and even this one it's just gonna run it through and make it uh, straight going across like this okay so that's what that looks like and also um, I'm gonna press S because this area here is uh, again a very very small area here and you want to make sure that those uh, stitches don't um, come together and make it look mushy you don't want that to happen either so with that so here I'm just making sure now again the distances here between this line here and this one here can be adjusted slightly so I can draw my box around just these node points here deselect this one and I can slide this down like this okay and you have complete control over the uh, editing of uh, design inside the software and it's uh, incredible uh, to be able to have that option uh, to be able to control the machine because the, the more that you can control the machine uh, means that the more uh, control that you have over your production and how that works inside the program here so uh, yeah making sure that those outlines here are good like that and this is what it looks like I'm going to save this all right press zero and I'm just gonna just click it here and just save it uh, just like that so those items are done I'm gonna press D again here I'm gonna go back uh, for the T um, I'll go in and um, I want the crossbar to stitch last here sometimes um, I may um, do this section here last if the um, next object is really close to it but because there's a distance here I'll do the uh, crossbar last 
And the reason for that is because if you're writing it, uh, that would be actually the last thing that you would actually uh, write if you're writing it out anyway. Um, here, go underneath here, left click, left click, press enter, there. And from here, click this one here. All right. And just like you see here with this one, now I'm going to zoom in here also. And what I didn't do, I didn't uh, put my bar there for that width. So by not doing that, I'll have to go back and I'll um, just, you know, you just, you just want to make sure that everything is um, the same width as you're going through here. Again, the beauty of this is being able to uh, copy and duplicate um, items so that you don't have to digitize them twice. And so with this, let's see here, I just wanna, and you can be as uh, tedious with this as I am when I do it, um, or you can just, um, you, don't, you don't have to be as, uh, um, you know, as uh, controlling as I am when it comes to this. And with this, so go here, and here and here in this press enter that's what it looks like okay let's so select this here change that color delete that one select and change the color here and I'm gonna save it okay almost almost there so now with everything else, uh, we can go in. If you look at the R here, uh, you can do the R. When I see the R here, I see the M. Okay. And when I say when I say that, I'm going to click the these two items here. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate them, and I'm going to use my arrow key going to the right here to move that in position here so that I can uh, digitize that. Okay. And you can use these areas here and these different items while you're digitizing to, to help you out as far as uh, just again speed okay and with this um, all I can do here I can just select this here I'm gonna press H okay I'm gonna select this area and I'm gonna move my move these back with my arrow key going to the left like this okay I can move that there and with these areas like this again these tight areas like this all I'm going to do is go in, I'm going to change the stitch angle so, so that the angle is matching the curve that I'm working with here. And then you have this one. And for this one, all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to select both of these, use my arrow key pointing upward, and I'm going to move those up like this. Again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the text is probably the most tedious, uh, tedious process um, for the embroidery. Uh, it's, if you, uh, and it's just really, really, um, you have to have some patience to do it. Okay, and now I just want to make sure also the stitching sequence. I want to make sure that um, I'm going to click this one. Um, I want to make sure that they stitch in order. Right now, if I click on this one here in my color object list. This is stitching last, and it should not. This should actually stitch last. Okay, so I'm going to click uh, the crossbar on the T. I'm going to do a sequence. I'm going to press my Control key down. I'm going to select this object first here. I'm sorry, this object, and then this object, and I'm going to go up top here uh, for my sequence, and I'm going to click it. It's going to change the order here. So now when I click this and press H. And I press my tab key to advance it. It'll do the crossbar, then it does this one and that one. So that's the order in which I want to stitch that out so that works uh, for me. All right. There, as I press tab here, there's a beginning and an end here. All right. And I'm going to save this. Okay. You have the letter I. Now again, I'm gonna I'm gonna scope it out like this, and I can use this uh, vertical bar here on the R, Control D, I'm gonna slide it over, like this. All right, 
and this crossbar here um, or this, this vertical tab here uh, for the eye now what I'm going to do with this is uh, I'm going to I'm not going to do the eye dot yet I'm going to do that last because I don't want to do a connection stitch here because sometimes with a connection stitch uh, at one to one sometimes they, they look like a letter L okay so I'm just gonna go in now on this one also uh, what I see uh, is I see that the E here can help me with the C okay so I'm gonna click on uh, the E I'm gonna do a control D to duplicate it use my arrow key going to the right scroll out here so it'll zoom faster just like that so this is again how you can actually go in and save time um, now the space here on the uh, the C's here is a, it is this a bit more give with this and so um, I'm gonna press control D here and I'm gonna uh, ver vertically mirror this so it looks like that okay so with this now with the C um, at least I have let's see here I'm, I'm gonna digitize it and for this um, here so I can actually start here with the C just like this okay and as I go in see I'll go here using it as a template you can you can definitely do that also with this and it's just to help you um, speed up the process with the with the digitizing again um, practice 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 this there and again extend it here like this there and I can end this right here press S click off this there press delete and delete now with this one press my space bar here space bar so as I go in again the most important thing is to be able to get everything in position uh, at one to one remember it's going to be this size okay so that's the finished size of embroidery and so that's what we're always constantly looking at or thinking about in the back of our minds uh, as we um, go through this process okay and again you have the letter A here also and again with that letter A the same process needs to be uh, applied uh, with this top portion over here okay and here again for this one I could just drag it over really fast like this and um, go in and horizontally flip it like this here move that there again all I want is that that first part of it now before I do that though I want to go in and digitize this area here first as I press my input to uh, my column C stitch here I may have to go in and modify uh, this in a minute here once I'm done with it because of this uh, short area here that I have here there or I can press backspace to back it up and just go all the way to the inside here and just angle it like this just like this here space bar here should be a curve like that so you see how that works um, we go in again making sure that the curves everything is doing uh, what it's supposed to do uh, so that you can go in and you could uh, and uh, finish it off so um, that's done so the next last thing to do here for me is to go in and um, run this here up top and as I start digitizing here just like this oops backspace if you make a mistake you can always press that backspace key there here, 
here and let's go around just like this and on the end again that last stitch there and press enter and that's what it looks like um, I can get rid of that one don't need that one anymore here now uh, again I'm gonna press the number one key from one to one that's what it looks like here but again these areas like this we have to be very careful with areas like this because uh, they can close up on us and so we can go in and either slide this down a little bit like this to get that to work and angle it like this also here on the bottom so that the angle is almost the same and as it gives it a smooth uh, turn here is what we're looking for with that very important okay as I press my tab key here it goes in it runs up top and uh, tab again there press my arrow key going up like this so so now I'm um, satisfied here and you could always go in and do other uh, things also to make a difference. Sometimes even with these two items like this, press my control key here and just move those up a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's always the little things. And save it here. And there. So last but not least, I have the eye dot here. With the eye dot, um, I'm going to go in, I'm not going to do it the same angle as this one actually, I'm going to do it vertically. Uh, and you can do that a couple of different ways actually. You can go in and um, click on your vector tool and click on your uh, rectangle tool. And you can go in and put that in there like this. Okay, then you can select it and choose the satin stitch like this. It'll fill it in like this. Okay, now it didn't fill in the right direction that I wanted it to actually. So um, see if we can go in and we could change the direction of the fill stitch that's going there so let me do this um, I'll select it here I'll choose my uh, complex fill stitch where it's going to ask me for a stitch angle okay and the stitch angle that I can use for this now is vertically see just a different way of doing it okay just a different way of doing it next um, I'm going to go in uh, I'm going to click on all of my vector objects here I'm going to um, unlock them. I'm done with those. Delete like this. I can click on the eye dot also and move it up one, two, three. I can do that with it. Like this. All right. And also, um, as I select this here and as I go in and change the color here on it. Now, um, you have your connectors here also. So with connectors, uh, you just go into your um, connectors here in your properties. Um, as I go in and when I right click, proper object properties, and go into my connectors. I don't have Wilcom font, so I'll use after object here. And right now, the space between what this trim after says here, this number, is, is telling the embroidery machine if there's any spaces between any characters that are greater than six millimeters, it's gonna do a trim. And that's why you're seeing uh, trims here. You don't see connection stitches here. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna make this two. And of course it's gonna go in, it's gonna trim, uh, it's gonna trim them like this. Okay, I'm gonna to go to design. I'm gonna remove small stitches here. Um, the default here's at three tenths of a millimeter. You can leave that the same. It's gonna export out that way. I like to go in and take out a little bit more. Um, and also I'm going to go in and select everything here as well and I'm going to go into my properties uh, in my underlay settings and I'm going to make the underlays here so I'm going to be able to use the let's do it this way Select the ones on the bottom here. The underlay that I want to choose for this is the uh, 
center run here like that now if you use the complex fill stitch like I did for this one here um, you have to go in actually and change that if I, if I want to use that running stitch I'll have to select this and then choose the complex turning that's what I should have selected the first time okay press enter and now it should allow me to go in and do a run stitch here uh, for the underlay with that also because it, it recognizes it as a uh, there here we are very good design move small stitches yes and I'm gonna save this okay and so the stitch out for this what I'm expecting here for this now is gonna look like this actually oops let me stop that hide the background they want to see that go directly to my lettering and so the way that this is going to stitch out should be exactly the way that, that it was laid out it's trimming between everything here also between the characters with your single underlay stitch all right and everything everything is according to plan so this is what um, you expect it to look like here when you go in and you stitch it out okay and um, you know that all of the columns are the same width without question underlays and everything are intact and so that's going to do it for this uh, session here I do thank you for your time and as always we ask that you join us at www.willcomamerica.com thank you